All right, welcome back to Pack West Bigfoot. This is David, and first and foremost, um, <clears throat> real quick, I just want to say thank you guys so very much for being here, being a part of Pack West Bigfoot, and all the really cool encounter stories here. Uh, like I said before, this is really based on entertainment. This is for those of you who are researchers or not researchers, just interested in the uh, the topic matter here. Um, and uh, what I like to do is take some of those really cool reports that you have and and uh, kind of turn them into really cool campfire-like stories for you. That way you can enjoy them and learn a little bit and have a little bit of fun all at the same time. And when you can't get out there in the field or get out there camping and searching, <laughs> I want you to have a place that you can, uh, you know, put those headphones on, close those eyes, get on in there, and uh, that's it. Enjoy Bigfoot. All right. <clears throat> so let me get a sip of the old. <clears throat> yeah, you know what that is. The throat clearing time. Mm. It is time for a great, awesome encounter story. Let's get going. This one, I absolutely love this one. I think one of the reasons that I like this one so much is that I'm actually fat and I am working on it myself. <laughs> Just so you know. And uh, to be honest, I really, uh, I really do enjoy good power walking. I go out in the little countryside here, uh, where I live, and during the winter when it's still kind of dark out there and everything, and I'm walking up these country roads here in Oregon, I am telling you, I am. <laughs> it is, <clears throat> it is a little. Uh, it can be a little freaky, some, some, you know, sometimes. So, this is why I enjoyed this one so much. So here we go. Fitness walking turns into almost nightmare near McLeod, California. McLeod, California is a really, really small town, so reports of Bigfoot are few because there are so few people. But there are some, and mine is one of them. I love fitness walking, even today. Now that I moved back to the city, I appreciate it even more, and for one obvious reason. Bigfoot is real. They are territorial, and they can be truly menacing. Here is my encounter story and the events that led up to my being charged by one of these massive and scary monsters of the woods. <clears throat> the Mountain Devil of McLeod. I moved to McLeod because of the teaching job I had got right out of school. I was living in Southern Oregon at the time. It was 1989 when I graduated and had attained a degree in education. I was going to be a teacher. <clears throat> I studied art, mainly. Uh, and my main interests were in painting and pottery. Being so close to the Northern California area back then allowed me to travel around and interview for some openings in the school districts from North Eugene, uh, Eugene Oregon, <clears throat> and South down into Redding, California. It would take about six months of waiting tables in Ashland, Oregon, before I got the opportunity to start in a small school in McLeod, California. I picked up and moved there not two months later. To be honest, it was my last choice to be in such a small town. I was hoping for Medford or Grants Pass or even Redding or Eugene, but McLeod it was. Yeah, it was nothing personal, <clears throat> nor is it today. I just simply loved the city. I was a city girl growing up in small t in the small town I'd ever the smallest town I'd ever lived in before was that of Ashland, where I attended college. I grew up in Portland, Oregon, raised by my dad as my mother had passed away from cancer when I was five years old. I never got to know her, nor do I remember much about her other than what my dad had shared about her, and often. She was a teacher, too. <clears throat> my dad never remarried, either, and all this time, up until he died and passed away at 73 years old, he loved her that much. For him, I think he was a hopeless romantic and knew that he'd see her again, and so I believe he has. But <clears throat> this is not about them. This is about me almost losing my own life, or so I thought I might, while out walking one evening outside of McLeod. Fitness walking, not running. I rented a small one-bedroom on the very outskirts of town. It was about a mile outside, maybe closer to two if I remember correctly. Either way, it was a small house that sat on the back side of a larger property, that of an old farm, that was not, at the time at least, operational. My nearest neighbor was a mile back, heading into town. 
I admit I was a bit overweight at the time. Okay, I was chubby, to say the least. But before I got the job, I was already six months into a weight loss regime of walking and eating healthier. I was down 20 pounds by the time I moved and was about 15 pounds away from my target weight at the time. That I remember well. But <clears throat> as I walked and walked some more, I came to love what they call fitness walking or power walking today. So between all that and changing my eating habits, well, I was feeling really good. Actually, great. <clears throat> my landlord, however, well, she was quiet. Almost a weird kind of quiet, you could say. When showing me the house, if that is what you want to call it that first time, uh, she would only speak when asked questions, and her eyes would roam past me and through the window outside. I thought perhaps that she was or had some disability of sorts, to be honest. But that was not it, after watching her a little closer. As she handed me the keys and turned to leave, she did turn and ask if I was a gun owner. Uh, no, I was not, but apparently I, I should have been. <clears throat> the question did raise the hair on the back of my neck, and, and I think she could tell. Immediately she said she'd ask because of mountain lion and sometimes the overly aggressive coyote or two I might see or come into contact with around the property or in the area of McLeod in general. I appreciated the thought and told her I would see about attaining one, but <clears throat> at the time that was a lie. At least it, it was. Going through college, I guess you'd know my thoughts on gun ownership back then. However, that has all changed today. She looked at me, then out behind the house, it seemed, again, and headed back to the car, and she left. Talk about weird. August is almost over. By the time I orientated myself to the school, got everything in place I needed and lessons planned and all ready to go, I had two weeks left before school even started and absolutely nothing to do. Worst off, I had no real friends <laughs> to do nothing with. And, no, I had, I had not yet, just yet at that time, had any friends, and calling up the landlady was out of the question. I decided to do and dive into some pottery work at home and get some painting in as well, so I was going to go on a walk out my back door and out into the wilds that were Northern California at the time. The property was large. I can't remember the actual acreage it covered, but it took me about a, uh, a few minutes or so to get to the barbed wire fence that was backed by forest. There I found a low point I'd seen before and stepped over and into the forest. There was a small stream that was pretty dried up by that point, but there was a trickle at least no wider than a, say a foot at most. I followed it, snapping pictures here and there along the way. I would take pictures, and then, after loading those pictures and having them, then I would paint the scenery from that point. That is when I noticed, however, in that creek, a large print, like a footprint. Then, as I looked just beyond it, there was a flattened area that seemed to share the same shape as the other, but not as much definition in the pine needle laden ground. Although I could not make out toes, I could see plain as day, a heel, and most of the rest of the foot, minus the toes. I, it was sandy and you could see that whomever it was hit the side of the bank straight on and passed it. <clears throat> the stride, however, well, that was a bit peculiar, as it was really, really long for a person. Well, unless you played forward or something for the warriors, I suppose. <clears throat> I looked at the other side of the seasonal creek that it really was, and saw no evidence of it crossing other than what I could see on the other side. But you could tell that they had to have crossed because of the direction the toes were faced. I moved on and soon forgot about the tracks. It was getting later in the afternoon, nearing dusk, a good time for picture taking, but it, a good time to get lost in the woods too. I took a few pictures and started following the creek back to the fence. I was nearly, uh, I was nearing the property when I heard something off in the distance, not too far away, but off in the distance. It was like a a large animal running off, and I mean a big one. You could hear it crashing through the brush and trees. I was a bit freaked out, and at that, uh, I was a bit freaked out at that, and moved faster myself. A few minutes later, I was entering the house and feeling less nervous. Echoing hills. The night was warm. 
And as usual, usual, I left my window in the bedroom cracked to let the cool Pacific Northwest air in. It cooled down in a hurry, too. But it was about midnight or so when I decided to head off to bed after my trek in the woods. I'm kind of a night owl sometimes and get caught up in a good movie or a book or even painting or pottery. As I started to crawl into bed, I, I heard it. A real, really strange noise coming from way, way back in the woods, past the property line for sure. I can, cannot make it out if it were a howl, a wail, or whatever, but it sounded rather scary, to be honest. It was as if some person, perhaps, was yelling and moaning all at the same time. The bursts of sound last for about 10 or 15 seconds at a time. It was really long. It lasted about, not but, five or so minutes, on and off, and was gone. And so was my energy level for the day. I let it go, <clears throat> and passed out. It chased me. I spent the next few days back and forth between the school and home. Up to that point, I had finally got to know one person uh, that I actually started forming a friendship with. And to be honest, she was a bit out there too, or so I thought. She, and I'll keep her name to myself for now, well, she had a belief in all kinds and sorts of things I thought at the time were weird and out there, if you will. <clears throat> One was the spirits that surrounded the Mount Shasta area and UFOs that frequented, frequented the place. On two or more occasions, she said she'd actually seen a UFO. And yes, she believed in Bigfoot. <clears throat> that did spark up a conversation that led into the noise I'd heard a few nights before. Talk about opening the floodgates. She was nonstop after that about what she knew it was a Bigfoot. That too, she said, uh, she had heard out near her and her husband's place. It would float down sometimes from the mountain they lived by. Once or twice a year it could be heard, <clears throat> but never was it on some spring or fall schedule. It was, it was random. But even her husband had mentioned it to me and was pretty sure it was something other than what he knew to be out in the woods there. Personally, at the time, I was just glad to have a friend. No matter how quirky or I thought she was, we were still we we're still friends today, and she rubs this whole thing in my face from time to time. A week later, and it was about time to be a teacher, I was a bit nervous, but prepared and ready. What I was not ready and prepared for was a monster. I was down a few more pounds or so. The fitness walking would take three miles in the morning, and the same in the evening. It was evening when I would come across the scariest thing on earth, and it was not all that nice either. I ate, rested for a bit, and then got ready for my walk. It was a clear night, well, early evening. It was starting to get darker a bit earlier, but being the last week of August, the sun hung a bit longer still. I'm glad it did. Run, Forrest, run. I headed down the driveway, hit the side of the old dirt road, and headed for the highway. Well, not really a highway, but it was a main vein where traffic would be light but noticeable at time. Uh, it noticeable this time of day coming in and out of McLeod. I had about 300 yards to go before I would hit the main road and walk two miles then, turn back, putting about 4.5 miles altogether that evening. At least that was the plan. I was almost at the end of the dirt road when I noticed something moving rather fast to the right of me through the trees and the brush. It was just something I noticed out of the corner of my eye at first. I slowed down and kept my eyes peeled to the right. Again, something moved, but this time it was clear uh, what it was, and it crossed right behind me, just behind me on the road, from right to left, and fast once again. I almost stumbled at the sight of the monst monstrously tall figure of a thing that literally less than three strides to, uh, took uh, to cross the road and disappear off the opposite side and into the trees again. My breath practically left my lungs never to return, but... Of course, it did, and I was realizing that I was finding myself in some kind of panic mode, one I was fighting to get myself out of. A monster, a Bigfoot, that is what I saw plain as day cross right behind me. I still heard it, moving through the trees and brush. It seemed it was just walking back and forth and back and forth. I gathered myself together mentally as much as I could and decided to head back to the house. Part of me wanted to get to the main road and forget the house, but heading towards the house was almost instinctual at the moment, so I started walking, and fast. 
I could still hear it as it walked on. After a few seconds or so, I stopped as I heard what sounded like a small tree or a very large limb being snapped in half. Then it was apparently thrown and towards the road I was on. It was coming in the air, but it slammed into some trees falling to the ground about ten or so feet off the side of the drive. I did make a sort of ducking motion naturally, but it fell way short. If it was trying to, it did get a great job, do a great job of scaring me, as I could have been any, I could, as if I could have been any more scared at the moment. I got back to walking real fast, as fast as I could, without making this thing think I was trying to bolt and have it bolt after me and make me its dinner. I really was afraid this thing was, well, hunting me, maybe. Again, moments later, a flash of black and monster crossed behind me from one side of the drive to the other. This time it was a bit closer, and with a slight breeze, I could smell it. Talk about gag-worthy, eye-watering stuff. People are right when they say these things smell. It's like rotten onions and nasty wet dog with garbage added as a side dish, if you ask me. It still crashed through the trees just out of sight again, with the sun sinking even more now. The darkness of it, the Bigfoot, and the trees beyond left only my imagination imagination as to what was it was doing and maybe planning. As for myself, running the last 100 yards or less became an option as I moved along at a really good clip. Matter of fact, as that thing stopped and everything but my panting heart, uh, panting and heartbeat could be heard, running was not an option. It became a must. I ran. And by the time I hit the door and slammed it behind me, I saw that thing one last time. It was standing there in the middle of the drive, <clears throat> just beyond the yard. It was really, really tall. I'd say about eight feet tall at least, and was black as the night was falling. The hair was long and somewhat, well, wavy in a way, I guess you'd say. At least it seemed that way in the breeze. It had no neck. It was just a head on shoulders with a face that was, as, that was wrinkled, worn, and seemed old. And it, too, was almost the color of the hair that covered the whole body. Black. Suddenly, it turned its whole body, and its arms swung around as, swift, uh, as it swiftly leaped and ran into the forest again. It crashed, I could he and crashed, and I could hear it yelling. Not screaming, just yelling in some crazy, weird language. At least it seemed like a language. I slammed the door, dialed 911, and started crying. Moving on up. Suffice it to say, <clears throat> I moved. Matter of fact, I moved out that very next day. The police said it was probably some homeless person, a tall person wandering around looking for easy targets, homes to invade, steal, and move on to the next one. Or it was some local students dressed up in a gorilla suit trying to scare the new teacher they learned just moved into the area. Personally, I'm not a liar. And what I saw was a Bigfoot, period. I moved into town, into an apartment, and stayed there one full year before I opted for a job in the city of San Francisco. I am not an outdoors person, nor do I plan on ever being, ever. But those things exist, and they are wild. Too wild for me to want to chance another encounter ever again. Sorry, but even, if, even as I share this with you, I am freaked out just thinking about the face in the drive that evening. But that is my encounter story. Thanks. Dory. <laughs>